Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Oscar Bevis for IFL TV. Johnny, thank you for well, having me you're right, at Duffy you're Boxing. Sure I know. I'm, do you know what? I got excited. I saw the sun. I got excited. I knew he was opening a gym today. Um, I think I got a bit too excited and now I'm freezing. Uh, yeah, it's cold. Yeah, Duffy Sports. Uh, we uh, Duffy Boxing. Uh, elite Training Centre here in Stratford. I think it's um, well and truly needed. The, the, the dream, the potential is to get these gyms up and down the country. Uh, the dream, the potential is to, to create community centres, boxing centres where people value themselves and value what they can do. And hopefully, with the sprinkle with a little luck, you know, turn out a next champion. If not, you know, create something strong in the, within the community. Just tell us a little bit about how this opportunity came up for you and kind of the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, so uh, Spencer and myself, we had a, a boxing app. Uh, Kieran Duffy, Kieran Duffy, you know, he's, he's always wanted to get a gym, especially in an, an area like this. Uh, Chris, he was a he was the brains that glued us all together. Uh, uh, I, I I'd love to, to you know emulate something similar up and down the country to what Brendan did with us in Sheffield in our gym. And so we just got our brains together, getting our brains together, and we all sat down and said, let's do it. And obviously, hopefully, this is this is the first of many. It might be a bit of a vague question, um, but if you could attribute one thing to a successful gym, what would it be? Having been in one yourself. Community. Yeah. Family. Um, uh, you, c you can create that, 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 that bond within a gym. You know, you may fight like a dysfunctional family within the gym, you, but you travel like a pack of wolves out of it. And that's what gyms are about. I said to Spencer, um, because he showed us the picture of him on the wall and he looked in a lot better shape than he does now. I said, is there a Spencer Oliver comeback? He said, no. But he said, look at the shape Johnny. Look at the shape Johnny's in. He said, I'm thinking about a Johnny Nelson comeback. So I've got to put it to you. Does this gym mean you're going to be working away behind the doors? Uh, I will be working uh, way behind the closed doors. You know, and that's what I've been doing. And uh, I like that. You know, I like get myself in, in shape and, you know, feeling and looking like I used to do by the grey hairs and the no hair. Um, I look at people like Mike Tyson at 57, the same age as me, fighting a young guy like Jake Paul. And, and Jake Paul is buying scalps. He bought the scalp of Anderson Silva. He's buying the scalp of uh, Mike Tyson. And he must be paying a hefty price because Mike Tyson don't need the dough. But Mike Tyson, like all of us fighters, think we can still do what we used to do. Mike Tyson's style suits a young man. Even when Mike Tyson was an active fighter, his style, once that, that speed and that that youth had gone, it wasn't as effective. Now he's gone in there with a young gun that's coming through. And this kid, even though he doesn't know after stuff, you know, that Mike Tyson knows and done and achieved, but <clears throat> he's buying a scalp. That's what he's doing. And I'd like to know the rules of engagement in this fight. Um, and, and that's what's important. And, and in reality, I don't think Jake Paul would stick to the rules of engagement anyway. His nickname is the problem child. So, um, so again, I just think... Uh, Let's, let's just see what the rules are for this. <clears throat> well, I guess that kind of puts uh, Johnny Nelson come back off the table for now, by the way you were talking. Um, is it kind of a tough thing to come to terms with as a fighter, knowing that as you kind of get a little bit older and your career is kind of in the distance, that you can't do what you once used to do? Of course, without a doubt. And you, even when it, the hardest thing to do with as a whole. The hardest thing to do because your brain knows what you're capable of doing, but your body's saying, I ain't agreeing with this, I'm out. You know, it's for the time, you can't do anything about that. It's a, it's, a, it's a horrible feeling, but it's something that you've got to accept. But that's why you get a lot of frustrated fighters coming back because they think they can turn the clock back. Um, just a couple of things I want to ask you away from um, this gym and etc. Dillian White's comeback, um, what did you make of his comeback in Ireland? He didn't look in the greatest of conditions, but he fought on frustration. Uh, his career, was, you know, the brakes were put on massively in his career because of this uh, drug situation. Um, to my understanding, you know, he's been given his license back to box again. Uh, Dylan has proved that he's a, he, you know, he's, he's he's a force to be reckoned with, but not at world championship level. He gets he got turned over at that. But he's the guy that you know these young guns have got to try and get through if they want to if they want to progress to be world champs or at least contend for world title. Then we had Joyce coming back after his defeat to Gilles Zhang on Saturday. Um, what did you make of Joe's performance? Joe gets hit far too much. <laughs> And Joe, and it's okay and it's exciting for all of us to say, oh my God, he's so tough. But you know, in five, ten years' time, you're going to see the effects of that. And um, 
and Cash Alley's got fast hands. He hasn't got the confidence to match his ability. He never has. Uh, Cash Alley was hitting him. You know, you know, Joe's not going to look good against someone that's going in there to survive and, and, and simply to survive. And that's what Cash did. And so it, it's a bit tough on, on Joe. But the only criti my only criticism is he gets fit, hit up far too often. And I, I don't like seeing that. Is it kind of a bit of a tough place perhaps for Joe to be in in terms of he's probably had people telling him to retire, he didn't look the greatest against Cash Ali, but when you've got what's going on in Saudi and he's watching that from afar, he must be licking his lips at the potential of the financial reward and the big fight, so it's kind of like maybe the best thing isn't to carry on, but there's this in the distance, right? It's a bit of a... Stars make fights, and I think he came up against somebody whose style was very much like us, he just met a big, bigger version of himself, so I'm quite sure he beats a lot of fighters out there. Pack in though, no. change your style, yes, uh, or move your head a lot more, yes. So his style works for him, but he's just got to move his head uh, because you can't keep getting hit like that. It just doesn't, it's not healthy. I mean, there's been a lot of the undercard, like, decent heavyweight fights on the undercard of, of these shows. Um, Dillian White, Joe Joyce, tickle your fancy? Could happen, could happen. I guess what I'm saying, there were some great clashes to be seen, you know, outside of the, the world title, uh, finger touching. Uh, but some weight, great fights to be seen. Um, just quickly on Ryan Garcia, um, how are you kind of viewing this from the outside? <sighs> Is he still try We're still watching pad videos of him with Derek James in the gym. I, I don't know if they're kind of pretending nothing's really going on, but then it gets to so, the so night and he's on Instagram live crying. Is, if you're in a position where you're the golden goose and you're surrounding yourself by yes men who, who don't want to tell you anything else but yes in case they lose their position, in case they might get a bit of bit, get a bit of gold sprinkled their way, and so common sense and reality is not really going to kick in unless someone's going to shout over that wall of yes men to say, "Yo, what are you doing?" And and and, and this is the problem. You know, you can have you will need people that are there for you in a self. You know, it's got to be a selfless act to, to, to want to help you. And I think what I see with Garcia, I just think, come on, man. You know, I just think this this doesn't look good. I don't know the business of what's going on, but I know what I see. I know what most people see, and I know, uh, and, and common sense tells him he's surrounded by people that are telling him what he wants to hear, and not telling him having a old conversation with him. Um, and just one more thing on the weekend coming up, Sheffield boy Dalton Smith um, yeah. flying the flag for, for Sheffield at the moment. Um, a tough fight against Jose Cepeda, and obviously in the background we've got the kind of Adam Azim stuff. Um, just quickly on the fight for Dalton, and do you think we'll see him and Adam soon, or is it one we're going to see in three, four years? Dalton Smith is a badass. I expect Dalton Smith to get the job done, and, and if he doesn't, he's a smart boxer, and he can stop fighters. I think he stops him late on. I think the potential of him, him and Adam fighting is very, very strong. Um, it's, a case of, it's a case of promoters getting their heads together, TV companies getting their heads together and getting it done. We've seen it happen in Saudi. Promoters that don't like each other eventually becoming friends for business and working with each other. So don't write it off. Wall Street memes casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.